Welcome back. If you watched my other video, you saw me install a Paragon Technology water pump spacer in the car. I'm trying to do everything I can to get it to run a little bit cooler. Prior to that, I'd replace the radiator with an aftermarket high performance radiator. Today, what I'm going to do is modify the shroud. Uh, on these T-Birds, the shroud kind of overhangs the fan and for the most efficient cooling, you want the fan a little bit behind the shroud, about half the thickness of the fan sticking behind the shroud. So I'm going to modify the upper half to accommodate that. And then the lower half, I'll show you the problem with that, but I'm going to remake the whole lower half of the shroud. So uh, let's get going on this. I've got it off and here's what looks like underneath there. You can see quite a bit of that radiator is unshrouded. I did a quick calculation. It's approximately 27% unshrouded area on the radiator. Now the aftermarket radiator I've got in the car is not quite as, as uh, tall as this one. It's about an inch shorter. So when I build this shroud, I'm gonna have to stop the bottom of it about right there, about an inch. And I've got the fan off. I thought, um, while I got this thing apart, I'd like to repaint that fan. So I stripped all the old paint off, gave it a fresh paint job. And we can measure the thickness of the fan. See right there, it's about an inch and three quarters. So we'll need about seven eighths of an inch, say three quarters to seven eighths of an inch, sticking out behind the shroud, behind here. I reinstalled the fan and have the upper half of the shroud temporarily in place. And like they say, measure twice, cut once. So I'm going to try and figure out exactly how much and where I need to cut this shroud. Um, if I lay a straight edge on here, kind of right there, you see that gap is between the straight edge and the shroud is about a quarter inch. I come across these two blades, do the same thing, similar amount. The first thing I'm going to do is a little repair work on this shroud before I try to shorten it any. If you look from right here down to here, you can see as this flange comes across here, it kind of has tapered off. I guess it uh, didn't have quite enough material at the factory when they were making that thing. So I'm going to weld a little piece in there and get that corrected. And here it is when I'm all done. You can see it's a fairly straight line down from here to here. So I think that'll be pretty good. After remeasuring everything, it looks like the top part of the shroud needs to go down about five eighths of an inch and both sides at the middle here need to go down about three eighths of an inch. And the way I'm going to do that is make a cut right through here, about a quarter to three eighths of an inch up, maybe even on a slight angle since I got to tip this side down. It's my goal that anybody that looks at this won't know it's ever been altered. Okay, I've got everything cut and I've uh, set it up in place and measured it. Seems to be just exactly what I need. So that'll lay in there just like that. Weld in the place on the outside. I'll also weld it on the inside here. All right, this piece is all done. I've got it bolted on here. Um, I marked where my other radiator ends. The core on the other radiator comes down to this distance right here, 18 inches, where the stock radiator is about an inch and a quarter longer here. So my shroud, bottom half of this shroud, which I'm getting ready to make, has got to end right down here. You can see this is the stock half. I'm not going to use any of this because i got to fill in all this area here. But I am going to use it to make a measurement here. I'm gonna have to compensate. This is sticking up about 
well, a quarter inch there. So if this actually, since I lowered this, this thing needs to come down about a quarter inch. So I'm gonna subtract a quarter inch uh, from my reading. I'm gonna measure right here to start with because this is where my new shroud is gonna bottom out at. That's uh, two and a sixteenth. So if we take a quarter off of that, it'll be um, one and 13 sixteenths. And I'm gonna make a piece that comes right down this side. I'm gonna make this shroud in like four pieces. I'm gonna have two side pieces, one piece in the middle, and then I'll have a little flange that creates this radius part. Okay, so here's what I've got cut. That'll go on both sides. And of course, I'll uh, add a little material to this when I trace it to the sheet metal because I'm gonna have a flange that comes out here, runs along there. Of course, I'll have a flange coming off of here. That'll get a couple holes drilled into it to bolt onto that. And I'm gonna need to add a little extra clearance here, so I'm gonna put a, a taper on this bottom. How much do I need? Maybe, uh, I think I'm going to put a half inch there, cut a half inch off. That'll be good. So now I'm going to transfer this to a piece of sheet metal. This is 19 gauge sheet metal, 42 thousandths thick. That's what the uh, original shroud is made out of, same thickness, so I'm matching that up. All right, now I'm ready to fold this. First, I gotta mark it. This is gonna be my right side. And what I'm gonna do is make a little mark on the side that is on the internal side of where the fold is. So if this goes here, this needs to fold it that way. So make a mark there. This one needs to fold out that way. Make a mark here. These top two are gonna fold in. So I'll make a mark here and here. So that's my right side. You need to make sure you fold it in the right direction. I've gotten mixed up in the past and ruined some pieces. So I always try to do this now. So this one folds out like that. This one folds out like that on the bottom. This is my left side. And then this is going to fold in. This is going to fold in. So I'll make a mark here and here. Now I go bend it.
Looking good, looking good. Now I can build my little flange that's going to come right around here, bring it out to this point here. I'll just be a little 90 degree ring that bends around there. All right, I've got uh, my holes drilled in this piece here. It's bolted together. I trimmed out these pieces here. So I think what I'm going to do now, before I make this ring here, I'm going to go ahead and pop rivet this plate onto the side pieces. Before I do that, I'm going to just brush a little black paint on these surfaces here. So any water or moisture gets in there, it's not going to cause these things to rust out as time goes on. And I've already marked where I want these holes, the pop rivets, and center punched them. Okay, this is a stretcher. What it does, it's got these jaws that clamp down and spread out so it'll stretch the metal. So if I stretch the metal on this side, it'll cause it to start bowing around. I've made some marks on here and I'm gonna first of all stretch right in the middle of the mark. Got a little lever here, goes down to a foot pedal when I clamp on it you see it's starting to move. So I'll just go the center of each mark, step down on it. Okay, first run through, you can see it's starting to get a nice arc in there. That was right on the line. So now I'll go back and go in between the lines. I trimmed a little more off of these sides, but it's actually fitting pretty good. Not bad at all. I think I'm ready to uh, clamp it in place, drill some holes around here and pop it with this piece in, and then I'll trim these edges off here. I'm going to put some paint in along this surface on the inside of here like I did on the other parts. I'll go ahead and mark this out and put some center punches here for the drills. Actually, I might just leave those little tabs on there. I could maybe uh, pinch them down a little bit right here and kind of smooth them around. I think that looks pretty good. All right, now I guess the next step will be to paint it. Put a little bit of body filler right in that seam there. Clean it all up, sand it down, paint everything. I am gonna have to drill a hole here and make a little bracket to attach to the bottom of the car there because there's no support 
on this bottom part. The original shroud has a mounting point down there, so I'll duplicate that. And here it is, I'll paint it up. So the next step, we put it back in the car. Hopefully it'll help a little bit with the cooling. And it's all back together now. If I put a straight edge across the blades here, you can see I've got about seven eighths of an inch. I actually put a tape measure on it. It's right on seven eighths. So that's half the thickness of the fan blade hanging behind the shroud. And down below there, can't see too good, but we've got that bottom half. And just looking at it at first glance, can't really tell that that shroud's been modified. Well, I just went on a nice long ride. I was using the air conditioner. It's the coolest this car's ever run. I think a combination of the new radiator, the thermostat, the Paragon spacer, and this uh, shroud modification is going to do the trick.